Chapter 33, page 156. Puritans, Puritans, and more Puritans. In 1630, the first Puritan ship, the Arbella, sets out for the New World. By summer's end, 1,000 Puritans have landed in New England. They bring a charter from the king, the charter of the Company of the Massachusetts Bay in New England. King, king Charles is happy to see the Puritans leave England. The charter is a document written by lawyers, setting the rules that tell how the colony will be run. It allows the colonists to govern themselves. It is important to remember that, from the beginning, English settlers expected to govern themselves. It is important to remember that each colony had a charter, a written set of rules. Those charters would evolve into constitutions. Top of page 157. Can you guess what might happen in a community without a charter or a constitution? Would you like to live in a country without laws? Would you want to write your own laws or have someone write them for you? You can think about those questions and then get back to the Puritans, who are beginning to pour out of England. Most of them go to the Caribbean islands, where sugar is creating great fortunes. But between 1630 and 1640, 20,000 Puritans sail for New England. Think about all those people risking their lives to cross the ocean and settle in an unknown land. It is almost as if tens of thousands of people today decided to live in outer space. Why did they come? Many came because they really cared about their religion and wanted to practice it in peace. They wanted to build a holy community where people would live by the rules of the Bible. Puritans believed that the Bible was the whole word of God. They tried to follow its every direction, which means they tried to live very good lives. Although the Puritans tried hard to be good, things didn't work out as they wished. They expected their colony to be an example for all the world. John Winthrop, who was chosen as governor, said, We must consider that all that we shall be as a city upon a hill. The eyes of all people are upon us. One thing they didn't understand at all was the idea of toleration. Puritans came to America to find religious freedom, but only for themselves. They didn't believe in the kind of religious freedom we have today. But don't be too hard on them. Almost no one else believed in it either. And how many people do you know who are willing to devote their lives to an idea they believe to be right? In those days, each nation had its own church, and everyone is expected to pay taxes for its support. Suppose you didn't believe in the ideas of that religion. Too bad. You had to keep quiet, leave the country, go to jail, or maybe get hanged. Top of page 158. Pretend you are a Puritan. <clears throat> you think that yours is the only true religion. So you believe the Reverend John Cotton when he says toleration is liberty to tell lies in the name of the Lord. Since you are convinced that only you Puritans are right, you think it is wrong to let anyone practice another religion. You believe that is helping the devil. You especially dislike Quakers. Your leaders call them a cursed sect. You use the name Quaker to describe religious people who call themselves friends. Friends believe that each person has an inner light that leads him to God. People with an inner light do not have to rely on a minister to tell them what is godly. The inner light is available to everyone. This is a highly democratic idea, and most Europeans thought it very dangerous. They were used to kings and priests and ministers. It seemed reasonable to them to persecute Quakers. When Quakers came to New England or Virginia, they were whipped, sent away, or even hanged. Um, remember, you are a Puritan, and you've left your home and everything you know and love. You've crossed a fierce ocean to live as you wish. You don't want people with strange ideas bothering you. Democracy is another strange idea. If the, if the people be governors, who shall be governed? The Reverend Cotton asked. John Winthrop, the beloved Puritan gover governor, who always tried to do what is best, calls democracy the meanest and worst form of government. And yet, the Puritans do practice a kind of democracy, but only for male church members. Once a year, they form a general court, 
and vote to elect the governor and council. The general court is a lot like the House of Burgesses, or Parliament, or Congress. Some people call the Massachusetts Bay Colony a theocracy, government by church officials in the name of God. But they are wrong. It is not a theocracy. The ministers are the most important people in the colony, but they are not allowed to hold political office. They do not govern. It is a small step towards the idea of the separation of church and state. Someday, that idea will be the foundation of American liberty.